Hey guys, James Brandon here, and we have this image that we took at a recent photo shoot of this little baby girl, Annabelle. And I wanted to see what we could do with this image using, <clears throat> uh, using the new Perfect Layers and Perfect Portrait from On One's uh, new Perfect Photo Suite. So, you know, if you look at babies' faces, uh, you know, we shoot them from time to time, and they always have some issues that you have to work through. Mainly, it's going to be dry skin or some kind of snot or, or boogers on the face that you have to remove or blemishes. Um, you know, newborns, this is just part of it and you just have to kind of work through it and see what you can, uh, see what you can do. So we're going to see how Perfect Portrait can work through that. So I've already removed some of the blemishes. If I hit the, uh, the backslash key here, you can see this is the before image. This is straight out of the camera. So we have a little goop around the eye. We've got a booger here. We've got a little goop coming out of the mouth here. And um, a little dry skin down here on the cheek, or on the chin, rather. So I removed those in Lightroom because it's quick and easy to do. I corrected the color, added a little contrast and detail, just some very minor adjustments. So now I want to see what we can use Perfect Portrait for around the skin. So I'm going to zoom out here. I'm going to come up to File and plug in Extras and select Perfect Photo Suite. And Perfect Photo Suite launches really quickly. Um, it launches you into Perfect Layers, which when you're using it in conjunction with Aperture or Lightroom, it lets you use Perfect Layers as a base for all of their other programs. So you can see up here at the top that we have layers, mask, portrait effects, blur, frame, and resize. That's the entire suite right there at your fingertips. So in this case, I'm going to go over to Portrait, and I'm just going to select that. <clears throat> and as Perfect Portrait loads, it's going to scan the image and try to find the face in the image. And you can see the brackets around the face here. And what it's going to do is, as it's loading that image and finding the face, it's going to um, go ahead and add its its own algorithms to smooth the skin out in the face and correct the blemishes and dry skin and, and any problem that it sees. And you can see it's done a very good job right off the bat. So we really might not have to do a whole lot in this image. So I can hit uh, Command Tab and I'll go back to Lightroom. So this is before and this is after. So it's messed with the, the white balance of the image a little as well. And we can change that if we want, or we can accept this new one if we like that look better. I'm kind of thinking, um, you know, this image here obviously has a magenta cast to it. So Perfect Portrait tried to remove that, and it's brought in a little bit too much of a green cast. So we can go over here to the um, sliders here and, and mess around with them and see if you know what fixes it what makes it worse but usually the the warmth slider here will affect the white balance a little bit you can see it got a little bit um, more washed out there a little bit more green if we bump up this warmth a little you'll see it start moving back to where it was so we want to get somewhere in the middle of those so let's pull it back just a little here go before and after. All right, I think I'm gonna make this just a little bit warmer here. <clears throat> I'm gonna make this uh, 12, just cause I'm having a little bit of trouble with the slider there. Hit enter. All right, so I think that's a good point to, uh, to leave off right there. So you can mess around with a few different aspects of Perfect Portrait. Um, you have the the inspector over here, and you have faces. So I can increase the skin smoothing if I want to. I can bring this up, and we can see what changes it makes. And it's just going to get make uh, the skin a little bit more blurred and a little bit more soft, which is fine. Um, blemish removal, same thing. You can adjust that if you'd like. And then you can come over here to the right side and affect other portions of the image as well. So I can use the eye refine brush to sharpen the eyes a little bit more if I want. Um, you can do the mouth refine brush and, and affect that. I'm gonna leave those both pretty much where they are for now. 
and I'm only going to use from Perfect Portrait, in this case, the skin retouching. So I'm just going to exit out of the inspector and I'm going to come down and hit apply. <clears throat> and after hitting apply, Perfect Portrait will take you right back over to Perfect Layers where you can start working on the image more. So as you can see here, we have two layers here. The top layer is our result from Perfect Portrait and the layer beneath it is our original image that was taken right out of uh, Lightroom. So you can toggle this top layer on or off to bring back the before and after just like that. And you can see what it's done here. So it's done a good job of, of smoothing out the skin and getting rid of blemishes and things like that. But you can see that it's also come at the cost of losing detail in things like the uh, the beanie that, that Annabelle was wearing, especially up here and especially around the edges where the skin meets the hat. <clears throat> so it looks like Perfect Portrait just smoothed it out a little bit too much and uh, didn't do a great job of separating the skin and the hat there. So what I'll do now is come down to the masking and I'm going to invert the mask on this layer, which is going to place a black mask over the image. So now whatever I paint into this mask will reveal the perfect portrait result. So I'm going to hit command plus on a Mac to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to drag up to really focus in on the face. Then I'm going to hit B to bring up my brush. I'm going to go into the inspector here, so I can just have this right here. And I want to change the painting mode to paint in, so that I can paint in the perfect portrait result. So I'm going to start with a fairly small brush. I'm going to bump up the feather here just a little bit. And then I'm going to just slowly <clears throat> go around the border here of her face because I don't want any of the hat to be blurred out. And if we bring in anything from the perfect portrait layer with the hat involved, it's gonna have that blurred out. So I'm just gonna take my time here and make a decent selection around her face. You can spend as much or as little time as you want, but spending a little bit more time is, is never a bad thing, so. That should do it right there. So now I'm going to increase the size of the mask and make the feather a little bit smaller now. <clears throat> Go around the eyes here. Make it a little smaller so I can get in here. All right, larger brush now because we're just going to go over the entire face here, including the mouth. down to the chest area here. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna hit Command-0 to zoom out to uh, fill the screen up with the result. And here we are. <clears throat> all right, so again, I'm gonna turn this layer off so you can see the before. <clears throat> you can see all the blemishes, the redness, the, the magenta cast that was in the image. And if I turn the layer on here, you can see the after result with the skin smooth and the blemishes removed and, and everything like that. So what what's happened now and what happens a lot when you're using these portrait retouching uh, plugins, just about any of them, is you can take the, the skin smoothing to a point where the skin starts to look unreal and almost plasticky. So I always like to get it where I want and then pull the opacity back on that layer just a little bit to bring back some of the realness. So with this layer adjusted here, or this layer selected rather, I'm gonna come down to opacity and I'm just gonna pull that back. I'm gonna pull it back to the way too far past where I wanna pull it back. <clears throat> then I'm gonna increase it. And then I'm kinda of just gonna go back and forth until I get it to where I want it. And probably right there is just about perfect. So that's 86%. And that's basically it. So from here, I would just save this out and it would import it back into Lightroom as a PSD file. And then I could export that as a JPEG if I'd like. Thanks for watching.